rocky road up to this point. Five minutes on the clock. Game one underway. UTA represented, obviously, by Alpa Samba. But no more Nava. Now adverse taking that place. We've got a substitution. Square one, Zanil, Heck, and Karma. Do I get a second chance at your initial question since I didn't have uh, <laughs> all the information quite at the beginning? Can I change that? Uh, can I change that answer around? Sure. Go ahead. All right. UTA oh, all the way. I before, you oh. <laughs> before you do. Before you do, Zanil over the top on an excellent read from the midfield's going to send a high looping shot from downtown and. UTA can't quite get there. So now, do you still want to take your cake that you were about to say? You know, I'm still going to believe in UTA. They just gave up a goal 24 seconds in. So be it. I, I'm going to say that Adverse is going to be the super sub for this team. I have no idea how they play, but I'm going to believe in the, the collegiate team despite, you know, I was in it for the storyline beforehand, but now since that's been totally ruined by below zero, uh, I'm going to go with UTA all the way. So far, a couple of quick looks. Adverse shown up big on the mechanical side at a pair of flip resets and good control, but it's touched away by a solid defense. That being said, we have main, good, maintained good offensive pressure down in this orange end of the field. Heck with a clear flip reset, but doesn't have the follow through to touch that one on. About a nickel for every time. And I've run into that situation. You get the flip reset, but you just don't have the positioning to follow up on it. Now, heck, through the midfield. Touches that one deep into the territory, but without the follow through, it'll be quickly turned away by UTA. And we're seeing a little bit of dump and chase developing here. Both teams are very happy to just smack it across the midfield line and give it away to their opponent for a reattack back the other way. I absolutely agree. There haven't really been any sustained series of offense so far, and Zanil is going to try to make that change, but they can't get the follow up on the backboard karma sending it infield but samba already in the position perhaps karma thought that uh samba was on their team and alpha's gonna put off the backboard samba's up and they can't get the touch so characteristic of ut arlington from the last series that we saw them play but i'm hoping that things have changed around for them because they will seriously struggle i guess a square run team with a couple former professional players on it you can't forget about that fact these players they especially Heck and Karma, they know what it takes to compete at the very highest level. And if UTA are not spot on in all of their plays, they could get walked over. Oh, doing a good job of standing in so far, minus that one looping shot from midfield earlier in the game. Halfway done with game number one in this best of five. Reminder, we're back in the upper bracket. This is back to best of five action. And we continue to see this dump gameplay. Need to see more control in the transition. Can't afford to just send it. There's a huge stop from Karma. Well read on the pass. Still maintains offensive pressure in favor of UTA but they don't find a way to find the back of the net. That gonna meet this one at midfield and uh, Karma coming back in to try to keep the play alive. Zanil's gonna push it to the corner and follow it through to the ceiling and that could just find some time and being patient and not diving in when they don't need to. They've got the lead and although 1-0 is hardly a secure scoreline, especially when Alpa is going to send a streaking shot to the far side of the net. You are never safe when that happens. Adverse setting up a beautiful pass. Zanil not in the correct position to make the save. And UTA, they tied up with less than two minutes remaining. That is a picture perfect textbook transition play, getting that one downfield from your own end, play it to the wall, get it clear of your shooting lane, pass with purpose out to a player at that wall who can then pass up for that follow through on the net. It's absolute textbook out of UTA. Now the question is, can they continue to hammer home transition plays or are we going to see this devolve into more of that dump and chase gameplay that we saw earlier in this match? It's certainly a possibility and we've got about a minute to find out whether that will be true and eventually we will have to see a goal from either of these two teams. It may not be in that minute because we will still have the possibility of overtime but it'll be interesting to see how this next goal develops. Because like you said, it's still very bumping it downfield and kind of just waiting out to see what happens, see if the opportunity arises and kind of creates itself. And if not, 
Oh, well, how can we defend against a counterattack? For square one, they didn't quite handle UTA's counterattack the first time, and they're going to go down once again. Daniil needs to make a good save, and they do. Alpha's already up. Look at top corner, and it's off the crossbar. Down and out. Adverse is going to keep it alive. Square one on the very back foot right now. Samba creeping up very closely, and they're able to keep it on the orange half. Karma and Alpha going to trade those on the op. And Samba going to eliminate Heck as well. Could allow one more transition downfield for UTA. Can they get a final shot on target? Potentially a last second goal to take game number one. Samba going up for it. And Karma and Heck combining to try to get one final transition. Zanil trying to keep it alive. Heck towards the net and it's off the crossbar again. Back to back plays. One for each team where it goes off the crossbar. And because of it, we will have overtime in the first game of the series. This is a very different UTA than we saw at the end of the last time we saw them here on stream. They have been absolutely laser focused on putting shots on net. The big difference is this defense is rock solid. Does an excellent job of getting in front of those shots and preventing any kind of follow through. Now, with the transition through the midfield, we're seeing kind of big solo plays, wide rotations, loose positioning out of... <clears throat> excuse me, outside, out, out of square one, need to see them tighten that up and really work the team play a little bit. I will always maintain team play beats mechanical play. Again, outside of the, the extreme example we saw earlier, need to see them work the team play because those are two very even teams and straight mechanics is not going to be the deal breaker. And from UTA, the first half of their series that we had on stream earlier, they were looking phenomenal with the team plays they were creating plays like it was no tomorrow and alpa oh my goodness they saw almost combined adverse comes through and finally they will have a goal i called it before adverse will be the super sub and they have found themselves a very important goal to give uta the difference over square one I love the way that goal developed, the repeat attack, the physicality, the solid rotation. Everything about that was absolutely beautiful. UTA showing up huge here, doing an excellent job of working the entire field, of managing the, the pressure up and down the whole field. I'm going to go to the demo map here. We'll see if it actually wants to cooperate. And we'll go ahead and I just want to talk about rotations. And we're looking at demos, but let's talk about rotations. I have the wrong size pen. Something UTA has done very well. First in the transition, again, they're making that look to the wall. That's the wrong color in the wrong direction. They're making that look to the wall and then immediately looking to center back up. You want to be shooting in this kind of center line here. The other thing they're doing is once they get down offensive, they make their rotation through the front of the net. They're looking to get some kind of bump and clear out that net and then quickly turn back around for a repeat attack. I love love to see the way they're working the field. I love to see the way that they're managing up and down and positioning to take advantage of opportunities as they show up. Hey, you're absolutely right. And for UT Arlington, nine shots, five for, for only for square one. It's still a, a solid amount, but UT Arlington, I think overall had the best offense overall in that game. And I certainly hope that they can keep it up and it doesn't falter and putter out like it did earlier in the tournament. It was scary when we saw them almost drop to Fallen Angels. And I've said it before, but I'll say it again. They need to keep this play up against square one. And the demos will have to keep coming through the physical play. I know that you're a huge fan of it, and we're going to hope to see more of it coming through and have it continue to play a big part in this series and in the outcome. But we've got square one. And UTA in game number two, and already UTA on the back wall trying to get this clear out. Alpha slow plays and allows it verse to carry it towards the side, but Karma there quickly goes to the backboard. Samba clearing it out, and Alpha there to help him out. It's important to notice that for UTA, not only are they getting the team plays on offense, but they're helping each other out on defense as well. The clears for a lot of teams. They can't just do it alone with a single clear. You just don't have the positioning. Maybe you don't have the boost for the power. Maybe you just don't get the right contact, and that happens. And But for UTA, what we're seeing them do is they're getting these kind of lighter clears away, but then already there's somebody ready to follow it up and push it even further downfield, forcing square one to completely reset on the offense. 
Well, that's what I like to see. I, I cringe a little bit when I see these big, just dump downfield plays. If you don't have a player upfield ready for that, which for a lot of what we've seen so far in the first 70 seconds or so has not been the case, you're not gaining anything. You're giving away possession to the other team. That's a common misconception here in Rocket League is you're not blindly pushing the ball towards your opponent's net. Rocket League is really about possession. It's about con controlling the ball and maintaining that possession until you see an open opportunity with Samba saw oh. right there. There it gets the follow through to finish off. This is a huge touch from adverse Samba almost finding it themselves, but follows it up before Karma in front of it. They slowed down. I think if they had just <laughs> said YOLO and gone for it, they may have been able to find a clearance or at least a block. But it's another well worked play from UT Arlington, and they're on the front foot again. But Oh, it's another one from Samba, the second straight tap down. But this time there wasn't a follow up from them. The touch was a little too light and not moving far enough towards the goal. But it was a good look from them. This is promising from UT Arlington. These down there, these plays are getting up very early. They're beating square one in the air and they can continue doing that. Samba's finding themselves always behind some at least one or two of the orange defenders. And Zenithio, oh my goodness, a very mechanical flip reset almost finds them an equalizer. That was a beautiful little touch. Great setup. They got the shot on that and they got the bump on their own play to try to clear it away. But UTA does this excellent thing that I love to see out of teams right now, which is it's almost like they're breathing on the field. The way they manage their rotations, it's as you exhale and things get wider and as you inhale and things get tightened up that's exactly how their rotation is on the field when they need to they can stack up on each other get close together do things like what we saw there on the goal line and be this very tight compact rotation that's super aggressive towards defense alpha not able to get the 50 to send that one home but when they get to offense when they need to set up big plays and use lots of space that rotation they exhale they widen out they get a little bit more free and loose throughout the field and it allows them to make good plays up and down defensive offensive wherever they need to be it seems like there is a player from UTA yeah these plays they're gonna continue coming as it forces a two orange defenders into a saves and Neil ultimately getting that touch and earning a savior medal for the effort Samba and Alpa they're trying to combine here Alpa didn't quite have the position to get to it as Neil trying to clear out this ball it's gonna fall to Alpa who's gonna find the Slight opening that Karma just couldn't cover. And Zanil gives it up to Adverse. And we have to talk about Adverse. They are so important to this UTA team. Despite coming in as a sub just recently in this tournament, they are looking like a wreck. Like they ha know their spot on this team. They know their spot on the pitch, what they need to do to be successful. And so many goal involvements already from Adverse. And it's looking like a smart substitution for UTA. Here's an opportunity opened up, but touched away by Alpa. Adverse down in towards the net, sends that one far side. Karma's more than up to the task to take that shot opportunity away. 62 seconds left on the clock, and UTA is in a fairly commanding lead. Two goals isn't the greatest lead in the world, but it's solid with this short time on the clock, especially with their ability to keep this ball down in the offensive end and bring pressure back the other way. Speaking of which, Adverse looking for a clear, and Alpa looking to finish that one off, but Karma has great positioning to prevent any kind of touch downfield, and we need to see a goal, but... Heck, with the read on adverse, we'll cut the lead to one. A strong 50 from Karma and Heck getting a very, I don't know if that was lucky or calculated. We'll say it's calculated. A very calculated 50 to push it out to the middle. And Zanil and Heck just, they're right there in front of the net, making sure that there's no chance Ute is able to clear this one away. And a strong kickoff from square one. You're trying to push it downfield. Heck takes a shot. It's blocked off the crossbar by adverse a huge defensive intervention from adverse and now uta gonna do some combination play to slowly bring it down into the orange half try to not allow square one to have a final chance to tie up this game uta would love to be at two games in a row put themselves on match point and really force square one out of their comfort zone out of their 
just out of their normal style of play take risks and it could allow UTA to be even more dominant going forward. Yeah, this was a great showing out of UT Arlington. They did an excellent job of managing positioning up and down the field. And they did the one thing that I think is the single most important individual mechanic in Rocket League, 50-50s. They owned the challenges up and down the field. They did an excellent job of positioning, of meeting, and being in that spot to prevent any kind of free shots, any kind of free play. I'd love to see going forward if they maintain that kind of dominance in the physical play additionally that huge demo on that back player a lot of times you see these teams when they rotate in defensively they'll put one player back post in two players ball side which could be very effective at preventing something into the shooting lane but you saw where if you just have two players rotate through for uh, excuse me two, play, two players rotate through on offense first player gets the demo on that back post player and the second player just has to beat out those last two individuals and there's nobody home it's a wide open net UTA doing an excellent job of taking advantage of that kind of stuff and it shows that their confidence and their individual ability to create plays they've got the recognition as a team to say okay this is a good opportunity to pull off that play that we know works so well they've got the synergy going they're looking good but they've also got the individual mechanics to be able to beat the player one-on-one -on -one and to take advantage of the player being demoed behind them so that there's no follow through all you have to do is beat that first player and roll it into the net and we'll see if uta can continue doing that in this third game if they can complete the sweep against square one and set themselves up for a matchup against the winner of team deviate or team devious and gentlemen two very strong teams in their own right but if uta continue playing the way that they have that should be an absolute barn burner of a match but they've got to get through one more game against square one do they have what it takes so far a good start maintaining offensive pressure for the vast majority of the time we've been on the field yet only two seconds had been spent in the blue end of the field prior to that last little crossover real quick right <laughs> now oh wow now a whopping total of, of six seconds are now in the blue end of the field in the first 50 need to see square one get this ball clear get this ball downfield that one's on net and karma with a great backboard read will clear that away but it's immediately turned back by samba now is a kneel up at first with a flip reset to the backside. it's a huge read defensively an absolute hammering of the front of the net here but square one is a brick wall stands resolute and is able to keep that one clear, but not clear enough as the offense continues in favor. Finally, the clear in favor of UTA. At Karma's touch there, so important at just giving Square One a chance to relieve some of this pressure. They, their net had been absolutely pummeled by Samba, Adverse, and Alpa. And I honestly thought UTA was going to find a goal at some point, but karma finding that clear it may not have led to a sustained period of offense or even really true possession of the ball but it's given them a chance to breathe and recover and reset be ready for another uta onslaught because that is currently going on zanil is going to have a slow carry out give their teammates a chance to recover grab some boost set up once again but they might just be able to find a couple good opportunities out of it. Zaniel trying to slot it at that front post. Samba was there and they're able to clear it out themselves as well. Up, uh, up very early, but Karma able to beat them, get it past. Samba up early as well towards the midfield. Heck up. Is there a follow through? There is. It's going to be a little bit high. Where is Zaniel? They got the shot and it's super slow. And it may have just thrown off the UTA defender a little bit, but where one using their mechanics to slow down the pace of the play for just a moment catch uta off guard and put themselves in the lead uta was looking for that quick breakout pass you could see they had players upfield you could see they were setting up for the transition play they weren't expecting to get beat back towards their own net in that scramble to recover from the failed transition out it put them in an awkward position i did like what i saw alpha stayed low samba went high but then Alpa commit high and it forced Samba to try to make a dive and Adverse was just in a terrible position to try to make a save on it. But there, oh my goodness, it's off both the posts. Alpa will get it clear, Samba up and high and it's gonna get finished. Oh no, it's not quite on, that's crossbar and out. What a play. Wow, square one. 
absolutely robbed. Oh my goodness. And then Samba's gonna come downfield and say, thank you very much. We just put up one heck of a defensive display, rock solid. And then Samba goes down the other way, adverse setting them again. Wow. It, it, wow, <laughs> what a changeover. UTA tying it back up late into game three here. We need to see if Square One can bring this back. Good news for Square One, they're still in the upper bracket. If they lose here, they do have the opportunity to move down to the lower bracket and make a run. And I have faith that they'll put in a good showing down there if it comes to that. But plenty of time left. There's a huge duck from heck and the lead goes back to Square One. There we go, wasting no time and getting back into the lead. A great catch from Zanil and heck, getting there at the perfect moment, not only to get the initial touch, but also getting the follow through. The defense looked like it might stay strong again, but they timed it perfectly. Maybe got lucky on the second touch, but the follow through was great. And it does mean that square one will have the lead once again. UTA, they're gonna have to find one more. They still got a good amount of time though, a minute 20. And UTA, they've been creating some great plays. Even though it may not seem like it's coming, UTA can pull a play out of nothing. And they're certainly not out of the situation of being able to get a sweep. It's still a possibility. Adverse fakes the shot and Alpha comes through, but the orange defense able to intercept. Karma pushing it downfield once again. It's gonna fall to Samba and the three-pronged attack. Looking at very dangerous attack down to Samba. It's a shot as Anil comes through. And we saw that, that very high angle from the pitch. You saw all three UTA players just so ready to transition down. They had a, the perfect play in mind. And it's a bit unfortunate for them that Zanil was at the end of it to block it. But you just could see right there that UTA was looking so dangerous. And they may not be able to find another one in game number three. But you better expect that they're going to come out guns blazing in game number four. And a quick turn back the other way, barely saved out of the corner. Both these teams out for blood at the moment. It's just an absolute banger back and forth. Slowing down for the last 10 seconds here. It's a wide open net. Zanil with the nail in the coffin. Eight seconds remaining. Barring a miracle, we will see game number four. The slow play from Karma and the little hesitation from Zanil to fake out the last UTA defender again. Those fakes, those light touches, uh, forcing UTA to make challenges, but they blow past them instead. And it doesn't look like UTA will have enough answers to bring it back into their favor. Square one, they've been pegged back twice already, but they found a step forward and can now start thinking about a reverse sweep. They still do need a second game in order for it to really be on but for square one, this was much better. 11 shots from them compared to eight for Arlington. And Arlington, they were putting up some fantastic opportunities. So it's not like those were just pot shots on net. Mm -hmm. Square one that was forced into seven saves and some truly incredible ones, as was UTA, six saves for them. And although it wasn't enough, you saw a huge effort from both of these teams to try to put this game away. And I hope that the next two games are very similar to this one. It really speaks to how deadly both of these teams are. They both bring an incredible ability to get downfield and put effective shots on net. UTA, those transition plays are lasers. They're so dangerous. But Square One does an excellent job of recognizing that change in momentum and flowing back with it so that when they do get caught in the transition, they're not caught completely flat-footed. They have a defensive rotation. They're set up. They're ready to make a play on the ball. Maybe they don't have the entire net covered, but if they can cover enough of it, it becomes too difficult for that quick transition to put an effective shot on, and it allows them to step up in the defensive end and make big plays flip side of the ball they've also been very effective in the transitions they make the quick plays upfield it's it's a brilliant battle between these two very even teams absolutely i hope that game four provides more of the same close-knit action as alpha is going to start off with picking that one up off the sidewall and heck immediately bringing it downfield as well samba and adverse both committing this could be a quick opportunity for square ones and Neil's flying through it. Heck has to wait just a moment as they weren't going to have a really quite good angle to put a shot on. Alpha is able to push it 
away, but they're still pegged back on the defense. I'm sure if you're looking at your stats right now, time in the orange half probably has to be less than one second, of course, until now as Adverse is able to transition with Alpa. And maybe they can get their first good chance, but Zanil's going to cut out on the backboard. Alpa pushing it through to the back wall. Heck and Alpa combining. And Karma's going to transition downfield and look for their first goal. 1.79 is the answer. And then that last one, 11.68. But you weren't far off. It was very quick back and forth. And here's one. There's all Adverse needs is a short look at the net. A beautiful redirect. And it will be UTA with the lead. The counterattack once again coming in for UTA at first. The slight push into reverse, and then the counterattack was executed to perfection. Adverse to a teammate down a field, and they pushed it perfectly into the back of the net. That's a UTA that we know. It's the UTA that we love, and it's the UTA that looks like we'll have success against square one. But Zanil carries it under Samba, draws two players into the into that half of the pitch karma putting a shot on target but adverse there very quickly the car barely left karma's nose before it was in the orange side of proceedings heck gonna go off the back where no touch alpha is gonna continue to force the issue against square one try to get another goal the two goal lead will be a lot more secure than the one that it currently stands at and Alpha looking to get the air dribble doesn't happen. Zanil the follow through. Sama needs to be careful as Heck is lurking. Heck's got the 50 and Adverse is able to push it away. What did I say? 50 50s. That it, it is, in my opinion, the single most important individual kit mechanic in Rocket League. Obviously, it's not going to win anything on its own, but that ability to effectively 50 like we're seeing right now. Oh my goodness, that one continues to lurk in front of the net like we're seeing right now out of UTA, makes it so incredibly difficult to get this ball into a good position for square one. They will get an opportunity to transition back downfield, but they just aren't quick enough or threatening enough in that transition to find a good look on the net before UTA is able to turn this one back and send one back the other way. And they're continuing to look. They've still got possession. Square one, hardly able to find possession find anything sustainable to give them some consistency on the pitch and they're really struggling with it right now karma and zanil trying to combine for a transition play and oh and first still got the touch but it was not enough karma finding zanil they got up and adverse gets stuck on that corner oh and the backflip so close but it's not enough UTA, they've given up a goal, but they are still looking incredible so far. At this point, I still back them to find a second goal before square one does. Two minutes, 10 seconds to find out if your prediction holds true or not. Samba demos the Neil to break up an offensive opportunity here. But a great positioning out of heck, just st stalling out over the ball there, positioning themselves to make it very difficult to clear. Samba. We'll take this one down and verse demos a defender, but it's not enough to allow a shooting opportunity. Alpa over top has an opportunity, sends that one towards the back wall, and Zaniel is up early. It's one thing about this square one team is their back wall defense is very solid, and a lot of teams really like to take advantage of using that back wall or trying to move sort of close along it like we just saw Alpa in their air dribble. But with a team that's as quick to the back wall and as quick to defend off the back wall as square one, you're going to have to get a little bit more creative. And I think that's why the transition play has been so effective for UTA, because it doesn't rely on that back wall attack. Yeah, you're absolutely right. They keep it so low to the ground and it, it makes the shooting just so much easier. But Alpha showing us another one of those ground dribble plays pops over a heck pushes the ball past a second defender and oh my goodness again the super strong 50 over Zanil could be the difference for UTA and closing this game out in four I'm sorry closing out this series in four games square one they've had their chances and another pot shot from Alpa from midfield going to find the net empty and just like that UTA they were tied and now they're two goals up
What a cut. So fast, so accurate. It's just off from dead center in the net. But it doesn't matter if it's dead center or all the way in post in because there's no one home to make the save regardless right off the kickoff. Now, sub 60 seconds remaining. A two-goal lead in favor of UTA. A one-game lead in the series, putting them on match point. Great position to be in. Speaking of which, Samba and the only other player in the area is also rocking a blue car. What a beautiful from Samba to push it to the ceiling, follow it up themselves. They are so good at that. Getting the ball to that backboard when square one's not on it at that. And then following it through on it, that's got to be their second, maybe third goal that they've had just like that. And it works so well. It catches the defense out and they really, it's Samba taking advantage of the openings that they're able to find however slight it be. And UTA, the three quick fire goals, looks like they have just overwhelmed square one to the point of no return for square one. Unless they have something incredible waiting in their bags, they will drop to the lower bracket and that will be the final nail in the coffin of this series. UTA, Alpha and Adverse combining and Samba starting the playoff, really. Karma can't get their hex too low. And UTA, they are going to set themselves up for a upper bracket finals matchup against either DVS or Gentlemen. And my goodness, Guiltanes and Delta, they are going to be in for quite a series of games. Yeah, this has been very exciting to watch. And I'm a little sad that it's going to be the end of our trip here. But it's not the end of the day for Rocket League for you guys. So make sure... You're hanging around and you're watching out the very exciting conclusion that we have for you here. UTA taking this one, pushing that very solid square one team down into the lower bracket. I Some tells me that may not be the last we see of them, but UTA is able to walk away. The victors here in our fourth round. Absolutely. I agree with you. This will not be the last that you see for square one. They did it so well to make it up to this point in the